presentation. Who's, who's been here before? All right. It's my first time. Don't sleep. There's new information. Oh. All right. Well, I'm Greg Renshaw. I am the senior research engineer here at ATRIL, if you don't know me already. Uh, my partner in crime in the engineering department is Mr. Uthman Mohamed Ali. Uthman joined us in May and is uh, rapidly taking over the lab, so be careful. He's on the safety watch as well. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Atrial safety. We're talking about several things. Uh, general requirements, your access to atrial, the equipment that we use in atrial, and the safety that surrounds what happens in the lab. Okay, we pride ourselves on being very safe. Here at Atrial, we're in a remote location. It takes a while for services to get to us. We're not on main campus. Uh, we don't have a lot of traffic here either, so it's up to us to police ourselves, be safe in the lab, do things safely. If you see things that are unsafe, find uh, Uthman or I, let's get it corrected, okay? If we don't have the right safety gear, you gotta let me know what we need. We have a lot of items available. We'll tell you about them as we get into the presentation, but by all means, if you have safety concerns, it's first in our minds are, are your safety when you're working on equipment or in the lab or even just at the building, okay? All right, so we heard some music earlier. We're gonna watch a video, but you guys get to vote. Do you like hip hop? Ooh. Okay. Oh. Pop dance? Ooh. Country flow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I pop out of my presentation because the link was a little bit quirky, but here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take my students into safety mode. We're gonna learn so we don't explode. Gonna take my students into safety mode. We're gonna learn so we don't explode. I got equipment in the back. I watch this attach. It's for 20 minutes. If you can't see none of that. If you don't know what to do, what to pour, and what you're allowed to throw Got no stress, I've been through all that Is what you'll say in college when you come back You'll be prepared by labs that I taught and showed All because you got into safety yeah, I'm gonna take my students to safety mode We're gonna learn so we don't need Gonna take my students to safety mode all right, you get the idea? We don't want to explode here at HL. Okay. Well, that wasn't going to be my first choice. I thought you were going to pick something else. So I'm going to play it anyway, just for our sake. <laughs> Going crazy, things could go wrong, things could go wrong. 
my God. They make me sick around chemicals. The chemicals. In my lungs. Tied back your hair and prep materials. The materials. One, don't you taste the skin? You know you should be wanting it to be taken away. Two, don't mix it in until the label's checked again. Three, no food or drink unless you want to have a sweaty dead in the morning. And if you follow this, you won't be the keepers. I got my rules and count them. Okay, so lab safety. All joking aside, you want to be safe when you're in the lab. Okay, next. We did that. We did that. We have red phones in the lab. Call 911. Okay, we don't have very good cell signal out here. Uh, I'm going to tell you if there's anything you're uncomfortable with, we have an emergency. First thing we do is we call 911. All right, I want to know how many people in the room are doctors, medical doctors. Nobody raised their hands. So we have medical emergencies, we're going to call the doctors. All right, moving on. Non-emergency, okay? Non-emergency means come to the engineer's office, all right? Uh, if you get injured in the lab, we'll talk about first aid here in a little bit, but we have all kinds of phone numbers posted just inside the door on the right-hand side. This sheet is posted uh, in there. Yes, we've given our phone numbers. Don't text us after 5 o'clock. Okay. All right, there we are. Young and beautiful. Thinner, <laughs> lighter. What are we voting? Okay. Use requirements. I think everybody should be familiar, but the Division of Research Safety, there's a link in that document. If you need it, take it with you. The U of I requires you to go through the online training with the Division of Research Safety. Okay. At the end of that training, I don't know, what is it, about 25, 30 minutes max? Uh, you have to go through that, you have to get your certificate at the end, and you've got to email a copy of that certificate to Glutton or myself. Okay. If I have one currently on file, I won't bug you. But if I can't find one, and you don't turn it in by the end of next week, I will find you. And you will not have access to Adriel because you have not completed that safety training. Alright? Uh, safety document, those are the rules we have in here. There's a form at the end that says you've read them, you're going to follow the rules. And I keep the form, that's also part of your access. Get all your documents completed and submitted to us. Uh, yes, sir? So for the, the form, the general lab safety, I think it should be done once every two years. This one? Yes. And if you've completed it, it's good for three years. If you've completed it in the last three years, all you have to do is go to that link, log in, your enterprise, enterprise password, and you can re-grab your certificate. Okay? And then just email a PDF or a picture of it to us so we can mark it off on our, our books. Okay. In our guide also references a link to the U of I laboratory guide. We're not going to go through that in its entirety, but you can read that and that applies to all labs that are on campus as well. To get access, complete the safety training. On the sign-in sheet, make sure I get your name, that ID, and UIN. Uh, at the end of September, all swipe card access will be deleted, and I will give them a new list to be active on the 1st of October. So if you don't have it done, all of this, the forms and the safety training, you will not be able to swipe in here at Atrial. And then you'll come and ask, hey, my card doesn't work. So know your card does, but you don't have access because you didn't get your safety training done. Uh, if you're new, you'll have 8 to 5 access here to the main building. If you need access outside those hours, Email the ICT engineers, and we got to set you up in order to use the alarm. Okay, this building is armed. The building next door, MPF, if you need access there, it's armed as well. So you'll have to get training on that for movement or myself. General rules out of Atrial: No one 
is allowed to work at atrial alone. Okay. Monday through Friday, approximately 8 to 5 p.m., there's staff in the building, 8 to 4.30-ish. Okay, there's staff in the building. You can be the only student as long as the staff are here. But if you guys are working after hours or on the weekends, you need to bring somebody with you. There needs to be two people here in the building. If you're coming to work at MPF, you need two people in MPF. Okay, there's a lot of equipment, saws, sieves, uh, hydraulic equipment that people use, and it's a danger. You need somebody that can hear if something goes wrong, uh, bring a partner, okay, coordinate so there's always two people here when you're after hours. If you open the door or a window, make sure you're the one who closes it. Okay, if somebody else wants it open, you make them take responsibility for it. All right? We don't need bugs, critters, rain, burglars, whoever, trying to get into atrial because we've left a door open. That includes the overhead doors outside, windows in the student office. It becomes cold in there and you open one to get heat or vice versa. Okay, make sure you're the one who closes it. Uh, never perform any work you're not comfortable for performing. We will talk about training on individual equipment here in a minute, but that's anything you're doing at atrial. If you're not comfortable doing it, don't. Come find you through an RI. We'll get you some help or we'll get you training. You don't want anybody to do something that they're going to get hurt because they don't know how or they're afraid of it. Okay? Uh, if you think it's not the best idea, it's probably not, so don't do it. Okay? Use it, clean it, put it back where you found it so somebody else can find it. It's not just the lab, it goes for student resources in the library we have a printer right uh, if the ink is out find someone to get it changed or change it yourself where the paper is okay definitely in the kitchen if you're using the kitchen you're using the coffee pot wipe the counter when you're done okay slips trips and spills don't leave anything on the floor let's throw our trash away okay if you're working in the lab you have to assign or set aside some time to clean up when you're done and i'll tell you why you need to clean up Swipe doors, that would be in A bay by the servo hydraulics, or here in B in the volumetrics room. We have safety glasses, uh, we have the earmugs, earplugs, earmuffs, we have uh, dust masks. The other items that are up there are strategically placed where they're useful gloves, hard hats, and other items. Okay. What's the minimum that's required to go into our labs? Who knows? What do you have to have to enter any of our lab space? Glasses. Safety, okay? We need glasses, right? What else? There's one other item that's absolutely required every time you walk in the lab. Long pants. That too. Okay, there's three items. Long pants, glasses, and what else? Safety toed shoes, okay? At a minimum. Can you wear yoga pants? Sweatpants? Yes. Shorts? No. No. What about headphones? Oh, so, okay. Everybody walks through the hall past the binder lab can hear Javier's speaker. Because it's not allowed to have earplugs. And that's okay. As long as it's not disturbing someone else, we can have those. But safety glasses, we will provide you safety glasses. Normal prescription glasses are okay for general lab usage, but if we're chipping, drilling, smashing, anything that could produce a projectile, piece of aggregate or something like that, we have to have ANSI approved Z87 glasses. Okay? 
If you have prescription glasses, we will get you a special pair that fit over your prescription glasses. Okay? Most of the work, we don't need it, uh, but if we're definitely for an MPF and we're using the saws, any of the saws, you have to have some safety goggles on over whatever's on your face. Okay? Uh, as the video said, no loose fitting long hair has got to be tied back. We don't want anything, no dangly jewelry. You know, if you're sporting the, the bling, put it in your shirt, tie it back. No sweatpants, jogging pants, pajamas, yoga pants. Javier, I'm talking about you. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Why, why do we need all these? Stay. No headphones, all right? Eye protection. We're playing around, keep it safe. Safety video to remind you. <laughs> so why did that guy survive? Anybody notice? What was he wearing? He had his PPE on, his personal protective equipment. He had his helmet, his goggles, his protective wetsuit. Right? He was wearing the proper clothing. Everything was good. He only said much because he's lucky. Okay, you guys know that's a joke, right? It's a big Photoshop. Nobody can jump that far in the air and land in a pool this deep and survive. Okay, don't try that at home. All right. <laughs> Any visitors, they have to abide by all the safety rules that we have. The exceptions would be if you're escorting uh, a scholarly visitor or somebody that is not using the lab regular basis, come get the engineer's approval, right? If we don't have anything really heavy or dangerous going on that day, it will probably be okay to take a quick tour. But please come ask who's going to ride first so we make sure if they're going to be in their extended time we'll make sure we can get them some proper clothing if we'll run an experiment or use some test equipment. Any of the equipment that's located in the lab or in MPF, training is required. Okay? you got to schedule that training with movement or eye before you use any equipment, any equipment that's in there. It might be as simple as we show you, okay, here it is, we'll turn it on. But we'll point out the safety aspects, what might get you injured, what might get somebody else injured if they're walking by, okay? You may know what you're doing, but if somebody else doesn't know what's going on or you don't know that somebody else is there, it would be a problem. Uh, schedule that with the research engineers. We will train you. We may have Mark train you if it's MPF, or we may designate a senior student that's comfortable with the equipment and we're comfortable having them train you. But you've got to come to the engineers first. We'll appoint that person who will train on the equipment. If you use equipment you haven't been trained for, and we find out or see you, you may get kicked out of the lab. Okay? We're not going to joke around about safety in our laboratory. Uh, if you break the rules, you might be suspended. If you do it more than once, you might get banned. Uh, you might get a first-time warning if it's Uthman that catches you. <laughs> Just kidding. No offense, Uthman. All right, I'm the bad cop. He's a good cop, right? First aid, like I said, nobody in here is a doctor. We have an emergency, uh, health and safety emergency. We're going to call 911. There are red phones. They're old-style phones. They're on the wall. They're on the shelf. They're completely red. Pick that up. We can only dial 911 on them, but that's what we want to do. If you dial with a cellular phone, you may not have signal or they may not know where we are. So if you dial on a cell phone, make sure that you can give them the address here. Okay, what is the address of Atrium? 1611 Titan Drive. Yep, 1611 Titan Drive, Rantoul. Okay. Uh, if you get injured, you must report that to the research engineers. Okay, if you need treatment need to know what happens here. The main thing is we want to make sure it doesn't happen to somebody else. Okay? We'll care for you instantly, make sure we take care of what's going on, uh, but we want to prevent that in the future if we can. Okay? There are first aid kits mounted throughout the lab. They look like this next to doors of entry. So they have small things for you know, small cuts and abrasions. There are band-aids, there's antiseptic, 
antibiotic fluids in them, there's dressings, that kind of thing that we can take care of very minor stuff here in the lab. Okay? If it's more than we can do with that kit, we're calling the doctor and you're going somewhere to get checked out. Okay? If it's a physical injury from lifting something or something falling on you, uh, first aid kit's not going to help. So we're probably going to ask you to go to an urgent care facility or the emergency room depending on what's going on. Okay? If it's severe enough, we might ask you to get a note from the doctor that says you got treated for this and you're released to come back to work. I've only had two injuries in five years that required somebody to go to McKinley or go to the hospital and get checked. We had a pretty severe burn on some of the molds. Somebody grabbed a mold, forgot it was hot, got some pretty good burns on their hands. Okay, that's not fun. Second one, we had a student in MPF that was lifting buckets and they didn't use proper lifting form. They bent over at the waist and were lifting buckets and they got a back strain. We made them go get cleared by a doctor to do work, okay? It's serious. Your health is serious. You're young in your career. We want you to go forth and have lots of years of using your engineering knowledge, okay? Uh, located throughout Atrial, pretty much any room you walk into except the soils lab. We have the volumetrics, the binder lab, Bay C, in Bay B, and in Bay A. Uh, in MPF, in the saw room, there's a med kit. And also in the uh, mixed use bathroom, there are first aid kit. So if you get injured and it's non life threatening, come report it to the engineers, get some first aid. We'll, we'll fill out an injury report and we may ask you to go get your medical coverage. If anything else, we're going to call 911 and get a professional out here to help you. Okay. Fire. What do we do if there's a fire? Yell. Yell. What do you yell? Fire. Fire. Seriously. Communicate, right? Whether it's a yell or you're telling people in the office, hey, there's a fire. What, what is the very first thing you should do if there's a fire? Get away. Get away. But on your way out of the building, what do you do? Pull the fire alarm, right? Uh, first, pull the fire alarm and contact somebody else in the facility. There should be at least one other person in here, right? Always at least two people. Yell fire, grab the fire alarm, and then get out of the building. Where do you meet if there's a fire? Right out front in the parking lot, okay? Because that's where the fire department's going to come. That's where it's easiest to communicate. That's where all of our cars normally are, okay? So we can count cars, we can count people. The fire department's going to be there. We're seen and it's a good meeting place. So we're going to meet out front. If you're comfortable picking up a fire extinguisher and using it, we have fire extinguishers located pretty much everywhere and in the lab and every room in the lab. Can anybody tell me where the nearest fire extinguisher is located? What? Right back here. Okay, that's what they look like. So if you see a red can like that, it's a fire extinguisher. Okay. Most importantly, if you're in doubt, get out. Be safe. All right? Uh, escape routes. There's three main escape routes in this half of the building, and they are the two end doors and the one in the middle. If you're in any of the labs here, you can come into the hallway or you can go directly out of the building out of the back north side of any lab. Those doors are always unlocked on the inside. We can always hit the bar and get out. Okay. Uh, this is what your fire alarms look like in this building. You grab a white handle and it's a T and you pull it down. It takes a little bit of force because we don't want them just to fall over and start the alarm. But grab it, pull it down, yell fire, and get out of the building. Okay? Fire extinguishers, that's what they look like in the labs. Using a fire extinguisher, how many people have actually used one? Okay, then this is important. Remember pass. Pull the pin. There's a safety pin that keeps the handle from being squeezed. So when you pick it up from the bottom one, you can't activate it. You gotta pull a pin that's right here. So P, pull the pin. A, aim at the base of the fire. S, squeeze the trigger or the handles together and then sweep from side to side. If your fire is no bigger than that garbage can, 
you can try an extinguisher. If it's a big fire across a whole lab bench, just get out. Okay? We can replace lab equipment. We can replace lab benches. We cannot replace you. All right? So let's get out. A little more in depth. Fire extinguishers save lives. When there's a fire, grab the nearest extinguisher and use it. Fire extinguishers are easy to use, safe, and effective. Fire extinguishers are your first line of defense when there is a fire. Overall, testing concluded that 98% of average untrained people can use a fire extinguisher safely and effectively to help save lives and protect properties. After minimal training, this increased to 100%. A fire protection professional has installed the correct fire extinguishers in the building. Be prepared by knowing where they're located. When there's a fire, always pull the fire evacuation alarm and make sure someone is calling 911 and the building is being evacuated. Then grab the nearest fire extinguisher. Using it is easy if you remember pass. Pull the pin. Aim the nozzle or hose at the base of the fire from 8 to 10 feet away. Squeeze the operating lever to discharge the fire extinguisher. And sweep the nozzle or hose from side to side until the fire is out. Move forward or around the fire area as the fire diminishes and watch the area in case of the ignition. So, when there's a fire, grab the nearest fire extinguisher and use it. For more information about the effectiveness of fire extinguishers, visit femalifesafety.org slash fire dash extinguisher. All right, does everybody feel trained on a fire extinguisher? Yeah. If you're not comfortable, don't. Pull the alarm, get out of the building, call 911, make sure your neighbor knows as well. Uh, but if you do pick up the fire extinguisher, remember the pass, pull the pin, aim it, squeeze, and sweep from side to side. All right, a little more detail on the fire, okay? Close the doors and windows that might be near you because what, what three elements do we need for fire? What's one of them? Oxygen. Oxygen. Something to burn. Something to burn, some fuel. What else? Spark. Spark, ignition, right? We need a source of ignition. So if we limit the oxygen, that's closing the doors and closing the windows, Right, we don't have a big gust of breeze to come through and really flame that fire pot. Okay. Uh, never ever re-enter a room where there's a fire. So let's say there's a fire in the lab and you grab the extinguisher and you can't put it out with that one extinguisher and you leave the room. Don't get another fire extinguisher. Don't go back in that room. Close the door, get out, it's time to leave. Okay. We can't put it out with one extinguisher. It's too big for us. Let's get out and let the professionals do it. All right, we are in the Midwest of the United States, and it is known as the tornado capital of the world. Okay, tornadoes happen. They are usually associated with a thunderstorm or a big storm front coming through where you've got cold air and hot air, and they move across each other and it creates an updraft. That's a tornado, very simply put. They are destructive. This building has what type of a roof on it? Does anybody know? Metal. A metal roof, right? Is that tornado proof? No. No. Okay. If a tornado came by Atrial, it would take the roof and throw it into the cornfield. So there are various places in Atrial where we can be safe. Next time you go out in the parking lot, look across the street at the, the tall wooden poles. There's one of them that has what looks like a bullhorn on it. It's a warning siren for tornado warnings. So if that siren goes off, it means a tornado's been spotted somewhere and we're all gonna calmly go to our tornado shelter areas, okay? Uh, watches mean the, the conditions are favorable for the development. There's no tornado yet. We're under a watch just to be on our toes that should a warning occur, we're ready to go take shelter in the appropriate place, okay? Uh, warning means one is developing, one has been spotted. Uh, it's time to go be safe in our covered areas. Where are the designated areas? In this building, down by the student offices, there's a janitor's closet. It says janitor on the door. That's one. 
Right next to it is an unlabeled door. That's our uh, networking room. On the back side of that in High Bay A is called the tool room. Those three areas are the safest at Atrail because they're concrete block walls and there's a concrete poured ceiling okay, in those three areas. The next safest area is the women's restroom because there are no windows or exterior walls. Okay. Those are the areas we want to go to. This yellow box is that area that has the concrete roof. Uh, in the event of a warning, who, who was here maybe two weeks ago and there was a warning on campus? And what did we do? I we stood out in the front with the glass windows and said, I don't see one. <laughs> <laughs> but the staff were alerted, the students were alerted, we all gathered in the hallway said, hey, what's going on? It was a main campus alert because our system, it was sunny. We were like at total sun, right? Our system didn't go off. We were checking our phones for National Weather Service. Nobody had indicated anything for this area, but we stayed on alert, so we were on watch. Had the siren gone off, we would have gone into one of these rooms and waited until we got an all clear from the weather service, okay? Uh, if that happens, and I did, I walked down and I opened the janitor's room. I opened the server room. Well, I didn't open that one, but I opened the janitor's room. Okay, and the tool room is always open. All you have to do is go in the lab and go to that room. So if we have an actual warning, staff, if it's during the week, a staff member will come down to the office and take your headphones off and say, we got to go get shelter. Okay. I'm not trying to do this to scare you, but it's something that happens here that we have a lot of different people from a lot of different countries that you may not be familiar with a tornado phenomenon. Okay. Not that frequent right here. There's been a few in Rantoul and a pretty good one in Gifford about 50, 10, 10 miles away. Nothing right here at our location, thankfully, uh, in the last probably 15 years. Okay. But it could happen to you at any time. All right. If you can't get into one of those rooms, the tornado is outside causing damage. We want to get as sheltered as we can. They call it the old duck and cover. Cover your head. Get your head covered, most important part, and get under something. All right? Back in the 50s, they used to teach children to get under their school desks. Okay? Get under your desk in the student office. Get away from exterior windows or doors with glass. Okay? If you can't make it to one of those areas, get in the hallway, not next to one of these, but get in the hallway, get low, get under a table. All right? Stay as close as you can. If you're outside, try to get inside to one of these areas, but if you can, get in a ditch, get in a low-lying area, okay? Uh, for general safety, if you guys are driving around, you're driving from Rantoul, uh, back and forth from Rantoul to Urbana, and there happens to be a tornado warning or something, get out of your car and get into a low ditch where you're below everything else, okay? Don't stay in your car, okay? Has anybody ever seen the movie Twister? A little older movie. You might Google that one up and watch. I mean, it's it's kind of funny and kind of scary all at once. But there's trucks and cars being sucked up into tornadoes and cows and all kinds of things. All right. Any questions on tornadoes? All right. Chemicals. We have some at Atrial. How many people have used chemicals at Atrial? Several, but not all of you. All right. If they spill. Two kinds of spills, simple spill and a complicated spill. Let's cover complicated first. Complicated, anybody gets injured, we don't know the chemical. More than one chemical, if we know they're toxic or if it's in a public space, it can spread, we don't know how to clean it up or there's a huge danger to the environment. There's not too many things we have at Atrial that fall under this unless we're in the more than one thing don't know how they're going to react. This is not a good scenario. That's a very complicated spill. That is not atrial. We don't have a closet like that. But something like that, that's bad. That is complicated. What do we do with a complicated spill? 911. Call 911. Alert others and get them, everybody out of the area. We'll confine it if we can. We do have spill kits in the solvent room. Uh, and we're going to wait outside just like if it was a fire or another non-tornado emergency. Simple spills. Well, I'll get to simple spills. If you get chemicals spilled on you and you're having a reaction, throughout the labs we have these eye wash and shower stations. 
I wash is the lower portion, full body showers from the top. Don't hesitate if you feel irritation. It's going to be a little bit of a cold shower, but it will save your skin. The eye wash, at the bottom there's a foot pedal. You press the foot pedal, the water shoots out from the eyes, from the uh, faucets for the eyes. Put your eyes in it, try to open them, hold your lids open. 20 minutes. If you get something irritating in your eyes, you should rinse for 20 minutes. The shower, I don't know if you need 20 minutes, you'll be shaking cold in 20 minutes. But it can't say. Uh, in five years, I've never had anybody have the need to use either of those. I'm not trying to scare you, but they're available. Where are they? Lab B, A, high bay C, and high bay B near the doors. You guys have been in the lab, you've probably seen it. Does the same go for asphalt when I was a kid? Uh, asphalt, you don't necessarily need one of these, but find the nearest sink and run cold water. If it's a contact burn or you have a hot substance that gets on you, immediately apply cold water. Do not apply ice. Ice will cause damage to your skin, more damage than it's worth. Cold water. Run it under cold water for a minimum of 15 minutes. Keep it under the cold water. As cold as that tap will go, probably about 10C to 12C, 15 Fahrenheit is what our cold water is out of the tap. Either the sink in the kitchen or there's two sinks that are in the binder lab. Those are the ones I would use. The bathroom sinks are kind of small. You can get it on your forearm. It would be hard to get your whole arm in there. Okay. No ice. Okay. Ice can freeze the skin and if you have burn damaged skin and you put cold ice on it, you will not know that you are getting uh, frostbite on that burnt skin. Because it will feel pretty good initially. And then you will kill the skin because you got frostbite. No ice. Uh, the first day that I came to work at Atrial five years ago, I met Puneet. And the way I met Puneet is he was running down the hall because he got binder on his arm. And that was a pretty good shock for me. My first day in the lab, uh, Puneet uh, spilled hot binder on his arm and he was running down the hall to go get an ice pack. I grabbed him and said, No ice. And we went and I held him for 15 minutes under the sink. It was okay, it was small, but it really hurts, right? Okay. So, <laughs> hot binder. You know. Okay, if you're concerned about chemicals that we're using, we have the MSDS or SDS sheets in our office in a binder. We can tell you everything you need to know about those chemicals. Okay. If you're going to be using some of the more toxic or caustic chemicals that we have, we will train you on how to use those. Most of the stuff we use is pretty minimal as long as you're not eating it, drinking it, or getting it in your eyes. Okay? There's a couple. We use uh, a couple of them that are, are uh, cancer risk. When we use those chemicals, we're using them in fume hoods, we're using special PPE, gloves, and procedures whenever we have to use those chemicals. Here's a list of the common ones that we use. Most common, mineral spirits. And I don't have it on here, but acetone. Why don't I have acetone on here? Mineral spirits works really good to remove binder off of things, but it leaves an oily film. So to remove that, we use acetone. Okay? Uh, these are mineral spirits and acetone you can buy in any hardware store. The most common use of acetone is where? Where did it used to be used all the time? Does anybody know? Paint. Finger, yeah, fingernail polish remover. Okay. So when you're in the lab, don't put acetone on anything that's painted because it will take the paint off. But it does remove the oil. We have some citrus-based solvents. Uh, definitely have hydraulic oil, a little bit of acid in the solvent room. The one that I'm most concerned with when we use is our TCE. We have a new auto extractor, and it uses trichloroethylene. It is high on the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency's list of dangerous chemicals. In, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and probably into the 80s even, it was very common to see it in the parts manufacturing industry because it's an excellent degreaser and cleaner, but it's also carcinogenic. Okay. So we limit our exposure and we use special equipment. Everybody uses either latex gloves or the nitro, the blue ones that we have in the lab, and they're great. 
everything we use except this chemical. Right? There are no gloves that are 100% safe with TC, but we have some that are called PVA, polyvinyl alcohol gloves, that are, they've got about an eight hour breakthrough time. So we don't ever hold it that long. We have to use those gloves whenever we're dealing with TC. But we'll train you if you're going to be using that. By the way, the PVA gloves are susceptible to water. You don't think you can put them under the water and they disappear. All right. Respiratory protection. We have particulate filters or dust masks. We use those in MPF quite a bit. Anytime it's dusty, you're free to use those as much or as little as you want. But if you need a, an actual respirator with a filtering cartridge, we're not going to train you on that. You're going to have to go to main campus go to the occupational health and safety to get full training on that. I can't be liable for training on respiratory. We will buy you the equipment. We'll buy you the mask. We'll buy you the cartridges. We'll make sure it's safe, but your training has to be from main campus. Okay. I will not buy you a respirator or allow you to use one until you show me a training certificate, if we need to use one. All right. Just some housekeeping. When you're in the lab, if you don't have space designated to store samples or work materials, find Uthman or myself, we'll find you some space. Okay? We need to keep it organized so that one, we're not interrupting someone else's work. Two, we don't throw your samples away because they're sitting out on the counter. If we see samples on the counter for more than a couple of days, they're probably going to end up in the garbage. We might be nice to send an email or ask, but if they're sitting out for a week, I got to assume you don't want them anymore because they're just sitting out on the counter. Uh, when you're done, make sure we clean off any work areas. If you're storing items that are not already in a can, or even if they're in a binder can, let's put paper on those shelves so we don't have spillage. All solvent or chemical bottles that we have have to be stored in the yellow cabinet that's in the lab when you're done with it. We do have vehicles available. If you have a need to transport materials on site from MPF to here, because they're heavy or you have a lot of it, we can get you the keys to the truck. If you need to get something from Newmark to here or back, you can arrange for that as well. But you need to schedule it ahead of time with the engineers. If you have a field project where you're gonna go make a site visit, you have to schedule that with the engineer. We will decide if you need to go or not. Most of the time we send an engineer, uh, however, if it's a local project, we may or may not go with you, but you have to schedule in advance. Don't show up that day and say, hey, I need the truck to render a quarry in Chicago, because I'm not going to let you take the truck. Okay? For student use, we have this one, <laughs> parked out back, just kidding. That's what our nice truck looks like. The old truck is very similar to this one but we'll get you the transportation. In the tool room, this is the door from the high bay into the tool room. So that's our tornado shelter. This is what it looks like on the inside. This great cabinet you can see when you first walk in. Most of the supplies you're going to need. We've got tape, we've got gloves, we've got brushes, markers, paint pens, uh, super glue, release spray, Ziploc bags, all kinds of good stuff in there. So if you're looking for a supply in the lab, check here first can't find it, come find somebody and we'll get it tracked down for you, okay? If you take the next to the last one, or at least if you take the last one of something, come tell Luthman or I so we can get it ordered, right? So that the next day or two days from then when you need more, we don't have it. I'm sorry, I don't have it. We can order it, we'll get it in here, we'll keep it in stock, okay? Tool room. MPF also has a tool room. We did something special in that one. We painted everything blue, and we have a very specific spot for all of our items. It has worked very well because we can look at a glance and go, all right, where's the room? So put it back when you're done. It works good. The next person has all the tools that they need as well. Recycling in Atro. There are two bins. This one is by the bathrooms. Here's the entrance between the two bathrooms. There's our water bottles. There's a Bottles and cans, plastic and metals that we can recycle. There's another one that's located just outside the back door of the classroom. All right, there's a sign above each telling you what we will accept and we won't. Paper recycling, 
throughout the offices there are little blue trash cans with no liners in them that have the recycle symbol on it. We can put all kinds of paper in there, all kinds of stuff. All right, not trash, just the paper. Copy room, there's a larger bin in case you have a little bit more that you put in. We also recycle batteries. I don't care what kind of battery it is, we'll get it recycled in the research engineer's office. There's a little gray bucket just inside the right side of the door. You can put your dead batteries in there. If you're working in the lab and you see a tag like this, white and red, it means the equipment is tagged out is not to be used. There is a mechanical, electrical, or otherwise a problem with it that could injure somebody if they use it. So if you see this tag, don't try to turn it on. It is tagged out for maintenance and repair. A little bit about electrical safety. We use equipment that takes electricity. Sometimes we're using extension cords. And extension cords is typically when we have our problems with electricity. Okay. Can you see electricity? No. So if someone's being electrocuted, how do you know they're being electrocuted? They're probably shaking and, and smoking or something. Okay. It's a little funny, but it's not funny, right? So what's the first thing you don't do if somebody's being electrocuted? Don't touch them, okay? Because then we have two dead people, not one. All right, so don't touch them. Let's get help. There's circuit breakers in the hall. We can turn the circuits off. Uh, if we have something non-conductive that we can pry that person off of that outlet or, or whatever they're being fried on, uh, we can try that, but we're going to call 911 and we don't need more injured people than, than one. Uh, three things to look out for with electrical. Where do I see this the most? Student office. Don't do this. You don't get a big cord and then plug more adapters into an outlet strip. One outlet strip per socket. If you need more power, come and find us. We'll, we'll find a way to get more electrical outlets for you. They call it piggybacking or chaining these, these power strips. You put six strips into one, you've got too much going through there. The circuits aren't designed for that. This is a very much of a hazard that happens in the student office. Okay, Water and electricity don't mix, so don't use it unless we have the appropriate grounding circuits. If you're using an extension cord, there are two things to look out for. The insulation on the outside is broken or there are exposed wires. Do not use that cord, okay? Let us know it's there. We can cut it off and put a new end on it or we'll throw it away and we'll buy a new one, okay? If it is a three-pronged cord and the grounding pin is missing and you only have two prongs, don't use it not how it's intended. We'll get a new end or we'll buy a new cord. Okay. These items are cheap enough, that it's not worth taking the risk on this type of thing with an extension cord. Questions about electrical? Almost done. One last thing, we talked about eye protection. I want to re-emphasize why eye protection is important whenever we have potential for flying debris. Let's keep it. 
Last but not least, if you're using equipment at Atrial, or anywhere else for that matter, machines have no brains. Use your own. Okay, let's be smart when we're in there. That, I'm done. Any questions? You guys are like in comas from all those cars on the sandwich. All right, that's all I got. If you haven't already, please sign in on the sheet, give me your information so I can get your swipe cards reactivated here at the end of September. Uh, before the end of September, I need your DRS certificates and I need the signed atrial compliance form. If you want to do it today, I got a box for it. You can always scan it and send it to me later. Okay? Thank you all. Thank you. Guys? Thank you. Thank you. Video you didn't see. This is the fourth one.